So now we're going to tackle some problems that are a little bit harder. They're partial derivatives and they need us to use the chain function and the product function. Okay. So once again, even though we've got two equations, we have twice as many things to solve because each of those equations has two variables and we want the partial derivative with respect to each. So let's first take the partial derivative of this first equation with respect to x. And now this equation here is a great candidate for using the product rule because each of these things in parentheses we can think of as one function. There's function one, here's function two, and we'll just treat, you know, remember our product rule, which is that we take the derivative of the first uh, function, multiply it by the second, which we don't do anything to, then we add to that the derivative of the second function times the first one. So that's my little shorthand note for me. So the first function is this guy here, and let's just focus exactly on this bracket and pretend the rest of this equation doesn't exist. If we wanted to find the partial derivative of everything inside here with respect to x, well we would see this first term as a 2 and we need to multiply it by the derivative of x squared which is 2x. Then the second term inside the brackets is 3y. There's no x there so add it to 0. Now since we're using the chain rule we need to multiply this whole thing that we've done by the second function, which is this whole big block. So we don't have to do anything to it, we just do that. Now we're going to add to that, we're going to take the first function, which is here. We don't have to do anything to it now. And now we're going to take the derivative of the second function. So we're going to zoom in on just what's inside here and look at the partial derivative of this equation with respect to x. So we have a 4 here. 4 to the times x and uh, well x to the, the deriv partial derivative of x with respect to x is just 1 so we'll just leave that and then there's no x over here so we've got that and you know this whole thing could be rewritten a little bit simpler as 4x that's what this term is equal to times 4x plus 58y squared plus uh, 2x squared plus 3y times 4. Okay. And that's the partial derivative with respect to y. I mean with respect to x. If we want to do it with respect to y, we're going to use the same trick. So zero in on this first function. The derivative of this, there's no y's here, so we ignore those. The derivative of the second term is just 3 because the y has no exponent on it. And then we're just going to write out the whole second equation. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to write the first equation unchanged. And then the second equation, we take the derivative with respect to y. Again, 4x has no y's in it, so it's just got a 0. And then 58 times the derivative of y squared is 58 times 2y. Okay, so we could rewrite this if we wanted to as 3 times 4x plus 58 squared. That's the 3 here. Plus, we now have 58 times 2y. Uh, that's equal to 116y times 2x squared plus 3y. There you go. All right, now for the first one, so we used the product rule and for the next one we're going to want to use the chain rule okay because the outer function is the natural log of something and then instead of just the natural log of x we've got the natural log of another function where that function is 1 plus y times x squared so remember the chain rule is uh, if we've got y equals f of g of x then we need to take the outer derivative, leave the inner derivative alone, and then multiply what we get by the inner function. All right. So first we take the derivative of the natural log of something, and that's equal to 1 over that thing. And in this case, that thing, which is the g of x, the other function, we're going to write it there. Now we take the derivative of the thing inside with respect to 
x only. All right, so we got 0 there because the derivative of 1 with respect to x is 0. We got to write this y and then take the derivative of x squared times 2x. And we end up with 2yx over 1 plus yx squared is our derivative. If we took the derivative with respect to y, we get the same thing at the beginning because we're still going to, our outer function is still, there's a y in there, so we have to take the derivative of it. And then we write the whole thing. But then when we go inside and take the derivative of, what, of the term inside, uh, we still get 0 here. We're going to write this x squared. But the derivative of y with respect to y is just y itself. Okay, So this is x squared over 1 plus y x squared. And that's how you do all of these guys.